Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Enzymes. This topic was suggested by Chloe Taylor. If you've got a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Now an enzyme is a type of protein and it's a protein that works as a biological catalyst. That is, it speeds up biological reactions. And there are three key classes of enzyme which you need to be aware of. The first is carbohydrases, and this is the only one where you need to know a specific example, that is amylase. Carbohydrases such as amylase break down starches and other carbohydrates into simpler uh, molecules such as sugar. So amylase is produced in the saliva, it's also produced by the pancreas and the small intestine, and as you start eating food which contains carbohydrates, it breaks those, uh, breaks those carbohydrates down into sugars. The next one that you need to know about is the protease. You don't need to know any specific examples of protease, you just need to know that it's produced in the stomach and the pancreas and the small intestine, and it breaks down proteins into amino acids. Finally, there are lipases, and lipases are again produced by the pancreas and the small intestine, and they break down fats into fatty acids. Fats can also be broken down into glycerol in the small intestine. Now the key concept here which you need to focus on is that all of these large molecules are being broken down into small molecules. And that inside the human body is the main use of enzymes which you need to be aware of. There are others, but it's digestion, this idea of breaking big things down into smaller things so that your body can absorb them. That's the key thing which you need to focus on when we're talking about enzyme use inside our own bodies. Because enzymes are proteins, they can be denatured, and so they are very, very specific to the sorts of conditions which they work under. Uh, the two key types of condition which you really need to focus on are temperature and pH. So most enzymes in our bodies work best at a roundabout body temperature. Get them too hot and they can stop working either temporarily or often permanently. They won't work above a certain temperature very well and sometimes they'll be completely destroyed beyond a certain temperature. pH is also crucial particularly in the digestive system. The enzymes which work in your stomach need to work at a very low pH so they don't work well outside of the stomach. Uh, once the food has passed out of the stomach and is partially digested and reaches the small intestine, bile is then released from the bile duct in the liver and that neutralizes stomach acid. It takes it back to a higher pH where other enzymes which work at neutral pHs or even higher pHs, they can then get to work. Again, if these pHs get out of balance, if they get to the wrong pH, then those enzymes stop working either temporarily or possibly permanently, they could be permanently destroyed within the body and the body would need to produce new ones. We can use enzymes outside of the body as well. There are some microorganisms which will produce useful enzymes to us and they'll release them from their cells. They can be quite costly to produce, but fortunately there are two big advantages. Number one, by using enzymes it will save time and money in a chemical process. So it can be worth the cost of producing them. And number two, because they work as a catalyst, like all catalysts, they don't actually get used up in the process which they're speeding up. So once they've worked on one molecule, either breaking it down or building it up, then they can go on to the next bit and be used again and again and again. So actually it can work out as being quite cost effective. The main way we'll use enzymes in our homes is to remove stains from things. For example, food stains from clothes. Most of these types of stains tend to be either protein-based or fatty or oily stains. Now, none of these are particularly easy to remove with conventional detergents. You've got to get them very hot. Using enzymes, you can actually break down either the proteins or the fats by using either a protease or a lipase, or often both if you've got a mix of both things that you want to remove. And you can use that at a lower temperature. So low temperature detergents will contain enzymes. They're of course a little bit more costly to produce, but you don't have to waste as much energy heating the water in order to dissolve those stains and remove them. In industry, enzymes are used in a similar way. For example, proteases are often added to baby food to pre-digest that food and make it easier for the baby to digest it. We'll use carbohydrases, adding them to starch to make sugar syrup. Uh, a similar process actually turns the center of things like cream eggs creamy and soft. They're originally hard when they're made and then enzymes are injected a small amount, but remember they're a catalyst and so they can be used over and over and over again. 
A small amount is injected and then it's left for a while and steadily that hard center will then go gooey and soft. They sometimes also use something called isomerase, which does a kind of different job to all the applications we've looked at so far. Instead of taking a large molecule and breaking it down into smaller molecules, isomerase takes small sugar molecules, glucose molecules, and joins them together to make fructose, which is a more complex sugar. Fructose is actually sweeter than glucose, and so it can be used to sweeten things in much smaller quantities, and so it can be used for things like slimming products. I hope that video was useful to you. You now need to check your learning with the Snap Quiz. It'll only take a minute. The link is in the description along with all the other links for this video. You can also click just here to watch all the other videos which I've made. You can click just here to download my free app to help you with your revision. Or if you click just here, then you can subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to leave comments and likes. Good luck in your GCSEs and thanks very much for watching.